Hi guys, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you some pictures and clips of how to defend in rugby. Uh, I want to try and help us improve on our defence. So the first three, the two things we're learning today is how first how to make the defence, how to create a system that will work and hold out the opposition, and also how to tackle effectively, not like uh, tackle shoulder in, but like types of tackle, chop tackle, and the, especially the choke tackle, which will be very key to the forwards who watch this video. So remember to comment down below if you're unsure or you have any ideas on for what to us to improve and what videos, uh, and enjoy. As we can see in this image here, we have an example from the France Tommy game. At the 2011 World Cup, we have an uh, image kind of specific to flankers, but mainly forwards here. They're coming in at that guard position. This is like, like enables us to put more pressure on the 10. So we want to try and target that, force maybe a kick or a rushed pass. This allows the backs on their way up to kind of create mayhem, uh, creating the opportunity for an intercept. This is quite key to the defensive pattern. That I want to try and bring into our games because we have the entire back row and our forwards in at the close fringes but if you notice at the ruck Tonga have only committed one or two so for this system that I want to that we should try and implicate is we're allowing maybe one or two jacklers in over that ball allowing us to compete for it but even if we don't win it we still got the defenders out so we want to try it so Step one to creating it is getting those flankers either in on the ball or standing off ready for the kick or covering others ready for the next breakdown. Here in the second image that I'm showing you, there are, we see it from the French perspective here, they've gone for a more of a tighter game plan here. So they've got their tight forwards coming in and around that breakdown. Tonga have been forced to commit lots of men just to clear now two or three frenchmen this allows the defense to set itself longer so if we can try and get our jacklers and flankers over that wall slow it down and force them to clean us out we don't want to try and steal it every single time we go in for that ball we want to slow it down and then while that's happening setting our game line and getting everyone ready to attack on the following phase here again in third image, we're seeing those second rows ready to take down those tight running forwards. So this enables the flankers to come wider. It also, if we can slow them down, they come around their fringes. So the red ball is used usually to develop momentum and go through the holes. Whereas if we can stop them before they reach the gain line, that enables us to go over the ball, compete for the ball, maybe win a turnover, but it also allows the backs time to cut down their opposite man if they do decide on the next phase from slow ball with a set defensive line we can get up and in, into their faces. The distribution of the tight forwards are kind of like allowing us to target those props that, and hooker that we see just to the left of that breakdown. If they come in to clean out that breakdown then we've tied in four defenders with only one loss to our tackler. And the Tongan retreating shows that if we can drive them back, they're attacking with six or seven men down, giving us like when when we are able to outnumber their attack, that means we can go up hard, up fast, get that big hit in. This allows our flankers, we can go in on the front foot, taking them out, taking them down into the ruck. This allows us to progress up the field without doing and as much work as they are because that's so demoralising as an attack being stopped behind the game gain line each time forcing possibly a kick or just slow ruck ball so that's good for the defence which enables us to get attack and it, the cycle keeps going in this image we're seeing the Tongans they're quite spread out around that fringe they're allowing the French to come running at them they they can tell 
in this image here we see as we're focusing on how to make those tackles against the attack we want to kind of shut it down so there's an overlap here in the Wales Island game with Wales ahead they don't want we don't want the team we're playing against to get that extra go forward we want them to be slowed down as much as we can this allows Sexton the Irish number 10 to come shooting out the line slows it down and then as you can see there's no other Welsh players but there's an Irish near enough to come in and compete for that which slows them down takes the momentum out of the attack forcing the Welsh to rethink their game plan this is quite key if we're going to when, when we do make these tackles we got to get that tackler has to go straight over that ball there's no lying around waiting for it to happen we got to react when we make our hits so even if it's a non not violent but non positive hit we have to go over that ball and contest for it it's key to allowing our flankers to get set for another phase because this if you see to the left of the tackle there's a massive gap so if that's quick ball Wales have gone straight through that gap and then they're back on the front foot we need to slow it down for three phases before we can start thinking yes we're we've got the ascendancy so the attack always have that three phase kind of advantage where we need to kind of go in and stop them using that here we see the flankers coming in and over that ball as you see number one here getting Jenkins is next to the two flankers the double hit takes out number four number ten is retreating for another phase but there's no support coming across four is taken out by the double, the blocking there by one which is very clever astute play by the Welsh loose head but this enables him to go over the ball and actually eventually win the penalty so we need to be able to make those if we are going to go in for a double hit get them down show the ref a clear release get straight on that ball because as you see the fly half he isn't interested in going in for that and they won't be at our age so we need to go in and hit those breakdowns hard as a team and we need to also communicate because there's three Welsh people to two Irish cleaners so if we can go in and take them out then that's very advantageous for a defence uh, so here we can see the Australian v New Zealand game in the 2011 World Cup all rights reserved of course by the IRB now known as World Rugby but going back to the footage we see those flankers that we've talked about have benefited from I think it's the number rates low tackle this allows Hooper to go over the ball or Pocock to go over the ball and just challenge for that ball so if he can get in there slow it down by his extra time for those forwards coming around the corner and the readjustment of the defence allows people at full back to readjust their position so if you are there I'd suggest watching someone like Halfpenny who's really known for his positioning covering that part of the back will probably do a photo zoomed in on the full back position just on itself so that'll be another series for you guys to take a look at uh, but if we look here again we've got the flanker there just after the nine Jerome Kano he's eyeing up him but if he can get on that ball and slow it down without giving away a penalty then it just slows everything up and that allows Ford to come around the corner set the line as we saw in the French example you can either have a tight one or in the Tonga example those forwards can go a little bit wider due to no runners where we can react to the defence because if we can do that we can take their attacking brilliance out of it if we can shut that down that means we're going to frustrate them if we can frustrate them that means if we can frustrate them we have the ability to get out of out of our area and out of defence get up in their faces knock them back five meters or grab, grab them on the shirt and then the second defender will come in and make that hit for us so really the focus in this image is hitting them low gives time for the flankers to come in over that ball slow it down allows our defensive system to set again so if it was from a line out if he can make that tackle 
backs can readjust around the outside, the f front row can come round, drop into their positions, and we can go again, rather than it going fast, so our backs have to cover a six-man over or three-man overlap, and our forwards aren't able to readjust if we can get one or two people just off that, because even if they're off there, not in the line, we don't want to put in lots of men, because that takes out the effectiveness of the low tackle. Getting them quickly to ground allows off one or two of our men to go in, slow it down, get that people go get those people round that ball. If we look here at this image, we can see that Richard McCall is it's a very good tackle, no other way to put it. He's gone straight onto that ball. Yes, it's gonna be hard to execute that sort of tackle, but it demonstrates the point I wanna make. Well if we can get on that ball, slow it down. It allows the defence to readjust, or from that position you can win the turnover. And turnover ball means we get Owen onto it, Anton, and our wingers onto it like Edge or Josh. And you can go straight down that line and get past. If you can get outside the defence, that enables you to do lots of key work with it. You can use the ball better if you're outside the defence rather than cutting back into the traffic and causing yourself to slow the ball down so we as a defense we want to get that ball back attack outside if we are the defense we want to spread wide and cut in so we're if we want we can if we've got numbers up we rush up hard and we all step in a man so we're attack, attacking the person on our inside shoulder so we're cutting that ball in if we can get there then we've got a high mass of four or high group of forwards ready to hit that breakdown we can probably steal it on the second phase from this sort of tackle if we don't steal it on the first phase this enables us in the end to go round the outside of the fence but we can slow it down readjust that's the key basically with this kind of defense you want to kind of readjust slow it down as much as you can because if you can readjust then you're going to be almost impenetrable and you can go forward rather than coming backwards and having to chase the game which is really key to this sort of defence that we need to introduce at St Ives because we're always losing five tries before we even raise a finger most of the time. So if we can get those, that defence, even if our attack is not there, none of our handling, and only a few of us are making tackles, not saying that I'm encouraging that, but if a few of us can tackle, then the defence at least is forcing them into areas where, say, I'm not the most confident with my tackling, but I'm good over that ball, so I come in, I get that ball, and then we can, because our attack usually starts off better than our defence, so we can hit it up and up through the gaps, get that turnover, and let's go on the attack again. So, yeah. So if we look at this image now, Quay Cooper again, same Aussie New Zealand game with the Rugby World Cup, we can see that the New Zealanders are putting pressure onto Cooper, we're forcing that less more direct kick, no ability to make bounce, bounce into touch. So if we're in a 22, we've got them under pressure like we were against the Panthers. We had that prolonged period of play on their line. If they've got the ball, we need to get hard and fast into that fly half space. Sort, make them go backwards, force the kick. And if we are putting that much pressure on at this age, they're not going to be able to kick it as well as an international fly half. So we can win that ball back, still in there 22, and that enables us to use our attacking play that I'm going to talk about in another episode, and we're going to be able to score more tries that way, rather than just having to hit it up more bluntly, and if we're further out, that demoralises the team, so in our defensive third, which kind of goes under the topic of defence, we just want to get it clear, we don't want to spend time camped under on our own line so when we are in their line we want to try and keep them under enough pressure so that we're forcing them to attack without making any ground so against the Pink Panthers they had that one dude who would run but if they didn't have them him we could have kept them back on their line for ages and probably played with about 70 80 percent of the territory in their half so we're camped on their 22 for most of it which is when we require a clever kicking game, the ability to move the ball better 
And if we can keep them press press pressured in their half, we can get that three person chase up on that ball. They're under pressure there. You're cutting down that option. If you get a charge down, lucky bounce could go to hand. You could get a try from it. But if you don't, then you you're just gaining ground every time they're kicking. We need to win that kicking battle for this to work. So we need to have strong kickers able to find space and get that distance behind it. We've got to have lots of ki a few kicking options available to us who can get it long. A couple who are good at finding space in behind the line. So if we can hit that at the areas with foot, and then that will be useful. Because they'll un our kickers will be able to understand how they wouldn't like someone to run at them. So if we can look at that, you, you're forcing them into a corner, basically. And if they're right-footed, you want them in kind of the right corner. Because you're forcing a long kick downfield and it's a hard angle for them to hit. And if they're left-footed, obviously, the left corner. Because you want to kind of keep them in that one space and enable our defence to get set again from that line out and go again. So I think that wraps up the analysis for now. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Easter break. Please remember to comment down below because I'm going to need your help in choosing what we need to work on. Obviously, I'm going to try and get that analysis from Mr Jardine, who filmed our games. And also, just look at your own game because I'll probably be able to post the entire video up so if you want I can if you contact me on Instagram most of you have it so if you contact me there I might be able to fit in your your personal analysis so and uh, look at where you personally can improve but as a team I'm gonna probably draft up a quick tick sheet so we know where we need to work on what we did well so like our choke tackling absolutely superb if we can do that better in a game or we can even just do it in a game. We get in on that front foot, doing it, forcing that turnover. And that's just something we did really well on tour. So, yeah, so just remember to comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.